reading all the comments. Um, who's here? <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, nice to see you all tonight for Friday Night Scrapbooking. And I just want to say a quick welcome to everyone. And if you are new here, let me know. Just say, I'm new, I'm new in the chat. And I absolutely love seeing all my favorite Friday night scrappers. Jean, Mary, Bunny's here, Kathy's here, Deb is here, Teresa. I have heard you guys have been waiting for this one. We are actually going to take a little break from process scrapbooking and we're going to do something a little different tonight. So can't wait to share that uh, with you. And thank you so much for the thumbs up. You guys, it just, I can't tell you, it warmed my heart to see that before I even started the live, you guys had already thumbs up. We're like, we're going to like it. We're going to like it. It's not even going yet, but we're going to like it. Okay. So um, welcome, welcome. Christine is here. Courtney, Carolyn, Deborah is here. Uh, Rosalind from Oz and Karen, Annette, and Sue's Pam, Sue is here. Lisa, Karen. Oh my goodness. Hello, friends. Hello, hello. Okay. Welcome to Friday Night Scrapbooking. So if you are new, if you are new, just go ahead and uh, let me know that. And then also, if you have a question, it's just sometimes, sometimes I miss them, you guys. Sometimes I miss the questions. <laughs> I'm just saying it right up front. Um, but if you have a question, put a Q in the chat and next to your question, because I do try to search for those and answer questions that you have. Tonight is going to be a little different, though. We're actually going to get up and walk around and kind of do a thing tonight. So it's a little different. Just saying. So beware. <laughs> I hope it goes well. Cross your fingers, my friends. we got a lot going on here. A lot of tech. A lot of different moving parts. So cross your fingers. That is all going to come together. Okay. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Oh my gosh. It's so good to see you all here. Thank you for saying hello. And thank you for supporting each other. That is amazing to see you guys saying hello to each other and supporting each other. So as promised, tonight we are going to talk about power layouts. And this is a tricky one because, you know, power layouts have been around for a long time, but I feel like there are tips and tricks, definitely, to learning how to do power layouts. And kind of as I've evolved over the years, my style of power layouts has also evolved. So what I'm going to do tonight is kind of take you through a little bit of the origin of power layouts, kind of how they started. And then I'm going to give you two modifications, two ways that you can modify how you do power layouts. And the last one is the one that I'm currently using. So you're going to have to stay tuned for that. But um, it's kind of a new twist that I've been enjoying. So stay tuned. And it, it kind of goes back to Tidy Up Tuesday. So if you've been watching me on Tidy Up Tuesdays, we've been talking about horizontal versus vertical organization and kind of how our brains work and how we organize. So <laughs> it has something to do with that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Okay. So if you, um, as I mentioned, if you are trying to go, who is this Lauren chick? <laughs> Where did she come from? Woo! Treva's here live. Welcome. <laughs> um, you can find me here. So uh, one of the brands that I represent, of course, is Creative Memories. I love a lot of different products. They are definitely one of my favorite scrapbooking supplies to use, as well as my own Craft Some Joy brand. I'm always coming up with new things. And in fact, I've got a little um, tidbit for you to tell you about what I just loaded in my shop. Some of you have already found it. You've already found what I put in my shop. I haven't even said it, but you've already ordered it and found it. Um, so anyhow, something new. I will be telling you about, but you can find me here. Um, Creative Memories, that's how you can reach me. YouTube, Facebook, some of you are on YouTube, some of you are on Facebook, so it's always nice to see both of those platforms. 
and also on Instagram. So if you'd like to see those still close-up photos, that's where you can find those kind of um, shots is on my Instagram account. So welcome, welcome. Okay, um, let's jump in. I still have some quick, I, I decided to put a new little screen on here today. <laughs> News and what's new. How about that? News and what's new. Because, you know, I feel like Friday night scrapbooking, I, I got this one comment and she's like, are you going to start scrapbooking? <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's Friday night scrapbooking. So you never know what's going to happen on Friday night scrapbooking. But yes, we will, you know, you can always fast forward. But I also feel like it's a great way to talk about things that are going on and news and what's new because there's always a lot of um a lot of things going on in the scrapbooking world and kind of different things so um so if you're not if you're just like get me to the stuff go grab a cup of coffee or whatever <laughs> and come back or you can just hang out and we can chat so um news and what's new let me first start off by saying <laughs> this is wait that that is what's new free shipping on orders of 80 plus. This is US. I know um, it might be the numbers might be a little different for Canada and Australia. So I'm sorry, I don't have those numbers for you. Put it in the chat if you know it. But um, that is probably one of my favorite promotions right there is free shipping. Because I just feel like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going through my stash. And man, I just ran out of mini tape runner refills. I got to get some of those. So um, it's just nice to know that you've got that free shipping uh, on orders of $80. So it's a minimum of $8.95 you're saving um, when you're when you're getting your product. So just keep that in mind. And then the other thing I want to let you know is they did start a new promotion today. So I'm going to kind of share. Um, this is uh, the Creative Memories website. If you have an advisor, please, please, when you order, make sure their little face shows up right here in the upper left-hand corner. And if you're in the U.S., you'll see a little American flag. If you're in um, other countries, you'll see your little country flag up here. But please make sure your advisor shows up in that little square because a lot of us work really hard. I know it doesn't always maybe look like a good since we are virtual, some of us, but we do work really hard. And it's so appreciative when, um, you know, you, you link to us as, as an advisor and not just go straight to the company. Just, just an FYI. <laughs> okay. So, um, what is new? Not only is free shipping new, but there's this gorgeous new painted garden collection. And if you've seen my Facebook posts, you've seen this, I did not get this in time to show it to you in person. So we're just gonna have to look at it on the screen again. And hopefully in person, we'll see some, some of this soon. Um, and then there's also the new National Scrapbook Day collection. And it is so pretty, it's bright and pretty. And um, Kylie and I are getting ready to do um, a National Scrapbook Day kind of a new treat for you. And so stay tuned to hear about that. But these are kind of fun products. I do want to mention, I made a mistake before. Um, the National Scrapbook Day laser cut bundle, I thought they were going to do two of each of those lasers because I got so excited when I saw that in the secret box. <laughs> I'm like, they did two, they did two. Yay! And then National Scrapbook Day came out and there was only one laser border in of each variety. And I thought there were going to be two. So I'm sorry, that was my mistake from a previous, um, I can't remember where I did it, where I said it, but just so you know, if you want to do double borders, you're going to have to get two of the laser packs. I'm sorry, but, or we can just do something creative and have fun with that. Okay. So the, the new promo that came out today is if you search for paper albums. So the search bar is up here on the right hand side. If anybody ever needs to know, just type, if you sometimes just popping in a search is so much faster than trying to find where it is in their um, menu system. Just use that little search bar right up here. And um, if you uh, 
uh, use your paper albums, type that in. There is a promo on paper albums. Look at that! They've got the banners up. Buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> All right, so basically, you guys, if you have ever thought about doing a paper album and thought about possibly um, trying it out, now is the time. And it's free shipping. So, you know, kind of... Uh, so I did share before, this is my little um, paper album that I did with uh, the Scrap Happy collection from my trip to Minnesota. So I shared this, I think, before. And my trick on creating this little paper album is that I shrunk my photos down. So these are all like two by threes, two by fours, um, two and a half by three and a half. You know, it's like I just shrunk all my photos down. And I love that. You can use four by six, four by six will fit. But I just love the look of little mini photos <laughs> in the paper album. So I ended up, I got a um, traveler. Oh wait, no, is this the, what is this one? Wanderlust, Wanderlust. I was going to kind of do, so I one of my projects I wanna do is the Zion and Bryce album and I got the Wanderlust because these are the, um, this is the collection I'm using for that album. And I thought how fun to get the little mini album and maybe like, um, maybe our horseback ride, you know, I have a lot of horseback ride. Maybe I'll do like a little mini album inside the big album again. So that's kind of, that's kind of how I like using these, but there's so many different ways you can use paper albums. So, um, try, try it out. See what you think. They're half price. Wow. How about that? Okay. Um, now, I also just want to mention, <laughs> while we're talking about what's new, so um, question, how can you get, oh, I know, Tina, I know the photo folders. I have got, actually, I've got um, someone coming to help tomorrow. We're going to really try to get Canadian shipping figured out. That's on my list. We're going to, I'm going to have to sit down, do some research. And I'm hoping to, what I'm hoping to do is put um, a Canadian option in my shop. Okay. So, um, but it's all got to be, you know, it's all, shipping is always calculated by size, weight, and distance. Those three things, size, weight, and distance. So shipping varies widely. And as you know, if you've bought anything from me, if I, I always try to give you the best price on that. So, you know, that's my thing, but, um, I've got to figure out for, um, Canada and even outside the U S at just the best price. So I'm going to try to do a little research on that. So just stay tuned. I know I, that's been a question. I know you've been asking a long time. I'm sorry. It just takes, takes time to work it out. Okay. Um, so, oh, what are the tape chips? What are the tape chips? The tape chips are the little sticky squares um, that, you, they're adhesive squares. They're adhesive squares. And you can use them like your tape runner. It's kind of another option for using your tape runner or um, uh, let's see what else, foam square, you know, any kind of, it's just a, a type of adhesive. I love tape chips for welding. So if you watched any of my welding stuff, um, you can stick them on the back and it kind of holds pieces of paper together. And Julie, yes, I'm I'm in touch with you. I hope tomorrow, Julie Art, because I'm actually I was actually under the weather for a little bit this week. So I'm sorry. I'm I'm really behind on catching up with emails and things. Um, but uh, I I'm getting caught, I'm trying to get it caught up. <laughs> Anyhow, oh, um, feeling better today. Thank goodness. Uh, but I did lose a couple of days this week. It wasn't good. Um, anyhow, uh, yes. Okay. Inside, yeah, the paper album inside the big album, right, Sharon? Ah, okay. Especially when they're all matchy matchy. I just like that. Um, yes, you're you're welcome. So I know my Canadian buddies, my up north buddies, we gotta get you figured out. It's been far too long. Okay, so um, what was I gonna? I uh, um, oh, so <clears throat> I I think I saw some questions and I got sidetracked. Okay, P 
paper albums special right now starting today. And that is um, the shipping is going to go through. I don't know where to put this. Shipping is going to go through uh, the 10th, the 10th, March 10th. That's my notes. So what I mentioned also is there's some new items in my Scrap Some Joy shawl, if you haven't seen them yet. Um, so this is under news and what's new right here. News and what's new. Some new little items in my shop. And some of you have already found these. <laughs> so what I have done, as you know, I, I love clustering. I love layering. And I also have kind of an addiction to die cutting. <laughs> So I've created some really fun little um, layering shapes collections for you. Now, yes, they are all white. Why are they white? Because Creative Memories gives us these amazing collections with all these colors and all these patterns and textures and sayings. And sometimes I think I just need to break that up with a neutral, solid color a shape, something that I can layer. You've seen me do it a million times on my layouts, right? Like I need something just to break all this busyness up. And so um, what I've been doing is digging into my very extensive die cut, die, metal die stash and coming up with um, collections for you. So you're kind of taking advantage over uh, maybe five years worth of collecting metal dies. All these different shapes, all these different patterns. So um, you can see them on my website. Um, and you can scrap some joy shop. You, uh, I, as I, as I'm, I'm trying to just, you know, have some fun um, creating these, you know, as I'm watching Netflix or whatever. <laughs> And just have some fun. So if I run out, don't worry. Um, I just put a collection six in there, a new one. Um, and then I even have a little tabs. Remember how we've talked about tabs? I love tabs. So um, there's a little collection of tabs. And I am hoping to add some neutrals in there. So like if you want to see tabs for neutrals. Okay, that's the news. Um, a new product. And it's really exciting. So it's kind of fun. But what I'm saying, if I run out, check back. It, it doesn't take me, you know, but a day or two to make more. And um, just kind of what you what you see. All right. Phew. That's news and what's new. All right. Um, let's jump in. Hello, hello, hello. Are the albums 8x8 and 12x12? 12 12? No. Oh, Roslyn, I wish. <laughs> I wish. That would be an awesome promo, just the paper albums. Paper albums are eight by eight size, okay? They are eight by eight, um, but just the paper, just the paper. Half, buy one, get one half. Um, wait, is it buy one? What was it? <laughs> now I'm, buy one, get one free. Yes, buy one, get one free. Okay. Yes. So are we good? I think we're good for now. Yes, it's only the paper albums. Thank you for, thank you friends for answering. Let's jump in to Power Layout 101. I'm going to take you on a little journey. Okay, now remember how I said I've got a lot of tech going on here. So <laughs> gotta first I've got to turn my lights on so you can see. I'm going to switch to the overhead. Okay, so here we go. Overhead. And look at, I've got zoomed in and everything. All right. So here we have it. I, um, I, I taught, I first taught power layouts in my album in a day class. So if you guys took this class, it's still available on my website. We go through a ton, a ton of stuff in this class. Um, one of the things we go through is the power layout method. And, um, so we're going to revisit one of the things I like that I, you know, in the handout that I created is why, why do we do a power layout? And, you know, everybody ha kind of has their own reason, but I came up with a few ideas here 
And first of all, what's so nice about <clears throat> doing a power layout method, having the whole picture in front of you to begin with is because you can make changes to your album before, 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 before you start scrapbooking. That's really important. Can I highlight before? <laughs> the reason that's um, important is because um, sometimes we're like, oh man, I've got this stray photo or, oh shoot, I should have, I just found more leaf pictures and those leaf pictures should have gone with these leaf pictures. And now it's all out of order. And right. So um, that's one thing a power layout method kind of helps you get your head around your entire project. It also helps you create cohesive pages. And like I said, even from different subjects. And so we did this kind of real time in this album in a day class. Thank you for um, saying you like the class, Laura. Thank you. Um, it was a lot of fun. And Carrie helped me uh, moderate that. We we had a blast, and it's it, all the videos are still there. Um, and you know, we did this live, so you can actually see it. You can see how we went and took my whole album, and I got that whole that thing that whole album laid out, and then I just had page after page after page ready to go. You can also find those like I was just saying those stray photos, give those stray photos a home, add um, any missing photos and memorabilia. It's really important to make sure you uh, have that memorabilia handy and ready to go as well. And then it also gives you a perspective for the supplies and the design of your album. And why is that important? Well, nobody likes to start an album and go, oh shoot, I really need that bark and meow paper and I don't have any, right? So, um, you know, because I've got these pages of my dog and my cat and whatever, and I really need some paper that goes on those pages. So if you are looking at your whole album in advance, it also helps you kind of uh, group together what you need to order in order to complete that album, right? So it's, say if it's a travel album, um, a friend of mine was doing one and, and, you know, she, it was like cabiny and Yosemite. And she's like, oh, the spring collection works really well for that. But then others were hiking. And so, you know, it was like, oh, Wanderlust is a better fit for that. So kind of looking at your photos, your pages, and kind of getting an idea of the supplies that you're going to need. And, and then just the overall design of your album. <laughs> Sharon, you're too funny. <laughs> she says she loved it and watched it three times. Yeah, that's the thing. Once you buy it, it's yours. <laughs> and you organize three albums. I love it. it it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and uh, Barb, oh, great. Okay, the videos, my, um, the album in a day, this is actually a class that I have on my website. Um, and let me tell you the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with the power layout method is my pop series. So those videos are ava available on my um, YouTube channel, the whole progress on project series. And I'm, I'm going to kind of cycle back into that in just a minute, but I, um, I'm going to get through some of this and then it, I just feel like this goes together. This all goes together. Like what we're doing right now in Tidy Up Tuesday tonight and the pop series and the pop member group, it all goes together. Okay, so when do you power layout? When you have a project that needs organizing, like you're just, you have no idea where to start or where to begin, or you're kind of overwhelmed with memorabilia um, and you just kind of need to uh, have that uh, organized and, and a way to do that. You're also, a uh, power layout is also great when you're gonna be scrapping away from home because it gives you an, a chance to get everything together for that uh, scrapping day away. If you have a lot of memorabilia, like I just said, you have a lot, you gotta, it's a good time to do a power layout. And when you just need perspective on your project and also if you really need to make an album quickly, this is one of the fastest ways 
to get those albums together because you really are making some of those choices up front that can slow you down in the process. And you'll see what I mean when I get over to my table. So what do you need for a power layout? Well, you need the power layout guides and I really feel the box is optional. I'm gonna show you um, in just a second, we're gonna switch over there, but um, uh, we're gonna talk about some different ways you can do it. The main thing are the power layout guides. These bad boys right here. So they um, are available at creativememories.com. Did I mention there's free shipping right now? You may want to get several packs of these if you like the power layout method and how I'm going to share how to do this with you. Um, this is the main component. This is the box that goes with it. Okay, it's the, the, the black uh, power layout box and you can get the whole set. Like you can get the box and the layout guys or you can just get the layout guides separately. Um, and then you're going to need, um, what we're going to come back because the way I taught this is um, my modification number two, which is with refill pages. And then you're going to need all your photos and memorabilia and all of that and some decorative supplies. So I'm not going to kind of go through all of this, but the main thing, I'm, I'm going to jump into that in just a minute. The main thing I kind of wanted to share was the why and the when, and, and we'll get a little bit more into the what in just a second. So I want to take you back. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Are you guys ready? Ooh, who remembers this? <laughs> Free shipping. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Who remembers crop talks power layouts? I had to look when this was printed. <laughs> it was 2003. 2003. Okay. So power layouts have been around a long time. That's what I'm trying to say. Power layouts have been a around a long time. And so this was the original handout that uh, Creative Memories had. Oh, sorry, I'm kind of glitchy there. Um, from years back, 2003. <laughs> do, you, do you still have them, Lisa? Yeah, vintage, we're talking Jenny. Yes, <laughs> flashback, woo! <-hoo. laughs> okay, so this was the original handout. Let me show you what it says. <laughs> Okay, you're going to need your photos and memorabilia. You're going to need your file mate organizer and folders. We don't even sell those anymore. <laughs> a power layouts box and guides, a small notebook, pieces of paper, pencil, pickup square, trimmer, custom cutting system, decorative supplies, shortcuts. We don't even sell those anymore, right? So the nice thing, though, is that it showed you step one, organize, and it gave you kind of this little layout on what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to lay out your boards, and then you're going to have your power layout box here. You're going to have stickers and note paper and your shortcuts. <laughs> I love all their little um, <laughs> icons here. Personal trimmer, custom cutting system. Look at the little dots. Uh, power shapes and color guide. We don't even sell that anymore. Okay. And so, you know, but this gave you an idea of, okay, so here you've got 15 pages you can lay out. And then um, they want it, you know, th some kind of filing system that has your memorabilia in it and your photos. And then now the second step, and we're going to kind of get into the second step then is to distribute, go through and lay out your photos and any kind of memorabilia. And boy, do we have so many more choices now on how to add memorabilia. Even now we have the new memorabilia pockets, right? And then three, okay, this is to me kind of an optional step is crop and four is choose enhancements. And so this is, these are definitely, um, we're going to talk about that optional in my point of view. Okay. Crop and enhance, but they wanted you to go through the entire process there. And then, um, then you all store it, then you put it in your box you know, the most, the first page you're going to work, work on first and then all the other pages underneath that. 
And then you actually put it into your album. So step five is to put it in your box. And then step six is to take that first page out, take it out and stick it down on your album page and then um, mount and journal. And bam, you're done, right? So sounds easy, right? <laughs> I remember when we first learned about this, we said, you know, kind of carry your box. Well, first of all, when we first did this, there was not even a power layout box. It was pizza, but we used pizza boxes and we had cardboard sheets cut down. That's way back when. And they said, you know, carry your pizza box like there's a hot cheese pizza in it. You know, so all your photos kind of um, stay, you know, organized and, and distributed the way you have them laid out in your box. Okay, so that's old co. That was the original thought process behind power layouts. What I love about power layouts is that... <clears throat> excuse me, it's still the idea of visual organization, how to visually organize your album. And that never, never goes out of style, right? How to visually organize your album never goes out of style. But kind of the process and the how we do that, we could tweak and modify. And we can also... Um, talk a little bit about that process. So um, what I'm going to do now is kind of switch over to what I have set up and we're actually going to go through the process. But I wanted to give you a little bit of this background. Now, just once again, I, I want to also just remind you that um, my videos, you, as I go through this, I'm, I'm going to be talking about um, hold on, my pop process. So I just want to share this with you. And, and once again, so I don't get a whole bunch of questions, like, what are you talking about, Lauren? Most of you guys know what my progress on project series is in case you don't. So there's this 10 video series, pop, my pop series. It's on YouTube. It's free. Um, and then we have a pop Facebook group that Mary Smith helps me moderate. And we have kind of open discussions, do a lot of fun things in that group. That's a free group. And then there's also the pop member area. And the pop member is where I do pop live. And that's where once a month for four hours, we get together and we talk about how we make progress on our projects. And so, um, let me just share, I was getting some questions and someone said, hey, Lauren, you really need to show people what that looks like behind the veil, <laughs> right? So if you're a member, this is going to look very familiar. So once you become a member, you get access to what we call Pop Live. And that's this area. You sign in, you log into your um account. And then, and this is, if you're a member, so you, it is a paid membership and you can join monthly or you can join yearly and you can, um, quit at any time. This is what you, you see, you have a whole new menu system when you sign in. Okay. And so the pop crops, this is our welcome page. And, um, then when you get into pop live, you get access to Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. These are the resources I have for you in the member area. And I have kind of three main groupings. I have the pop crops, which is the um, the dates and uh, upcoming crops. And then that is also where I post the Zoom link because we are live on Zoom for four hours. Yes, it's true. <laughs> on Saturdays, once a month. I also have a ton of downloads for you. These are not available anywhere um, except in the pop group for free as a member. You get a ton of downloads. I'm going to show those to you. And then you also have the archive. So now this is over a year's worth of videos that you can access anytime through the membership area that you can watch and re-watch. So there is never a shortage. And let me tell you, 
the ladies in this group are pretty darn smart. And um, as I mentioned, I was pointing Julie R. out. She is going to help us with Evernote organization. And so we're going to do this as a little treat in the pot member on um, hopefully on Saturday. Next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And um, so we just never know what we're going to um, have in the member. So um, like, as I said, you've got the upcoming crops. These are the dates. I added a new page that gives you all the dates, upcoming crop dates. And then for the ones that are past, there's a little link where you can watch the replay. It takes you straight to the video. Um, the other ones will have, as I mentioned, the link. So there's here's the whole Zoom invitation. If you need the whole invitation or when it's time, you can just click the pink button and join. Okay. So the other thing is the downloads, and that is um, every month we get a brand new base page and border layout, which we scrap together. And I also have a challenge for you every month to post that, and then you get put into a drawing. And then, um, as I mentioned, just a ton <laughs> of uh, downloads that are just free here for you um, in the pop member area. Okay, including this is a really great one, the monthly markers. And um, we talked a lot about that and how to use those. There's pocket page planner, um, journaling cards, library memories, update, memorabilia checklist and tracker, journaling prompts and idea list, the crop talk, journaling handouts, pop templates. Um, I mean, just a ton of different handouts in here. So, um, that is the member area. And then, as I mentioned, the archive, which you can then just go back and all the past crops are just loaded right on here that you can watch. Okay, so I needed to tell you that because <laughs> um, right now, as I'm switching from this view over to the table, we're going to really dig into why what I just shared with you is important. So um, it, Jenny is asking, is the pop member area where my album in a day? No, my, my album in a day. <laughs> I know I have too many, too many things, right? So my album in a day, let me, um, let me just go back one more time here. Let's see. Um, my album in a day is, yeah. Okay. I'll just, show you that super quick. Do a screen share. My album in a day. Oh, okay. Let me sign out. Um, you've got to sign out. Okay. So that you can get back into my quote website. Okay. It didn't sign me out. Sign out. Sign out. There we go. Okay. So when you sign out, then these screens come back up home, shop, join, classes, blog. So if you hit classes, um, this is where my classes are. And album in a day is right here. Okay, um, and I'm, as, as many of you know, I'm, I'm still working out a few last bugs from bringing all of this over from my old website. So um, if you find bugs in the transfer, just, you know, email me and I've been fixing those. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, let me switch something now. And okay. Got it. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jenny. Okay. So I am going to, I've got a new um, gadget here. So I, it's just going to take me a second to get this set up. <clears throat> And so stay with me. I'm going to switch over here. Ta-da! Okay, so you, we're gonna come for a little ride over here. One of the biggest tips I have for you is, um, Okay, why is this so close right now? Um, 
<laughs> Let me see if I can, yeah, make this zoom and pan. I'm going to see. Oh, nope. Okay. Well, it looks like Okay. Pop press. Yeah. Okay. Lauren's camera. Let's go again. Let me try to connect that one more time. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Whoops. Resume. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Now we're um, upside down. Here we go. Okay. One second, you guys. Oh, close your eyes because you're going to get a little. Um, why? Okay. Why is it doing this? I had this set up just perfectly before, and now it's not playing nice with me. Okay. So <laughs> what happened? Okay. I, th I think we're going to, there we go. All right. Okay. So <laughs> looks like it's upside down. <laughs> I feel like my phone is upside down. Why? Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can do that. <clears throat> this is what, remember I said tech, you guys, wait, there's technology involved, so <laughs> I have to get this situated the right way. Okay, if I go this way. Oh dear, my friends. Um, okay. I'm going to try once again and, and we're going to just, we're just going to get it. We're just going to do it. It's going to be perfect this time. Okay. Let's try again. Come on. <laughs> okay. I see it there. And it's not showing up. Phone. Okay, one more second. <clears throat> okay. Let's, um, uh, here we go. Oh my goodness, friends. Okay, I just had this working. Okay, what can I do? Plan B, plan B, because, um, hang on. It's, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh dear. All right. Um, oh, I just don't even know. <laughs> okay. So if I am looking at trying to get this camera to come up again, okay. I am going to try. It's, uh, you can kind of see it blurry, can't you? Okay. This is... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Terry, I, I know. Um, all right. Let's see. What can I do? Mm-mm-mm. It, and I've never had this one. 
happen like this before. I was playing with this earlier today and it was just working fine. All right, so. Um, okay. <sighs> dinner. <laughs> Sandy says she's making dinner. Okay. Um, let me see if I switch back over to here and then if I come back to my camera, it usually just prompts that it's ready. My camera. Okay, control <laughs> delete. <laughs> Leslie, I love it. Um, I know. You know what? I'm gonna. If you don't know, now you know. If I don't know, now I know. Siri, I don't know. One second. I'm gonna reboot my phone and see if that works. And then in the meantime, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back to you this way. But we're gonna just do a little impromptu with the, with the, um, <sighs> um, with the, what do you call that thing? Computer. <laughs> okay. So, um, but I was hoping to be able to watch you guys and share this at the same time. Okay. So while we're getting, I'm going to wait for my phone to reboot, but so what, one of the main things you want to do is have as much space here that you possibly can. So what I did, I'm going to kind of back up, is I cleaned off. Woo! Sorry about that. Um, I cleaned off my um, scrapping table. And so I'm using this whole half of um, my island to do the layout. So as I've kind of mentioned before, one of the best things is to have as much room as you can to do the power layout process. Okay. So, um, I, I feel like I lost so much time. Let's speed it. Let's speed it up. So here is the original box. This was the original power layout box. And then, as I mentioned, I showed you that's the new the new power layout box and boards. So what the original box was, as I mentioned, this was kind of a horizontal album organization, right? So you would get all those pages laid out on these boards and you keep it in the box in a horizontal format. Okay, and then... <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can angle down a little bit more so you can see the desk. And then um, as you scrapped, kind of as I was showing you that handout, you would take out one board and then you could take the things off of this board and put it directly into your album. So let me share how that original process worked. I showed you that little handout, right? So what you would want to do is, and I use these boards for just about everything. Um, and so what you would want to do is start with your first page. If that's a title page, then you can um, set that out here. And then you would do a two page spread, right? And so the tabs kind of go, if you can see those tab here and a tab here. I would always go opposite outside so that I know the tab on the left is my left hand page. The tab on my right is the right hand page. So then you would lay those two pages out next. Okay, so if I have a starting page, that first starting page there, if it's a single page, <laughs> and then you'd have a two page spread. Can you guys see this? Okay, I can't even see the comments anymore. <laughs> um, and then you do the next two page spread. So I'm just gonna do kind of three, but you get the idea. So two page, two page, tab out, tab out. And then you would just keep going, you know, along to the next set. And 
then once you spread out your photos, um, you would take the first one and then stack it and then take that one, stack it and so forth. So, um, does that make sense? Okay, can you, I hope you guys can see that, okay. Let me try. Um, okay, hold on a second. I'm gonna see if I can do my phone again. <laughs> let me see if it's gonna let me click to start. phone's back. Okay. I really think this is going to be a better view for you. Yes. See, there we go. Love it. Okay. Now I just need to get my holder situated the right way. <gasps> Yay! Isn't that better? You guys, that's so much better. Okay. Okay. So, you know, yes, control, alt, delete, or reboot. <laughs> oh, when all else fails. Okay, so, um, so you can see here, this is so much better because you can kind of see the whole process. Um, let's see. Yes, we can see. Okay, um, you can see my spread. Okay, good. Um, okay. I'm going to have to come back and, and check on the chat, but the idea is now you can see my whole layout, my whole setup. So I really kind of wanted to, sh including my, my tea and everything, I really kind of wanted to share how I was doing this whole process. So this is how we would start. We would get in um, our power sort box, right? And you'd grab a, a stack of photos and then you just start sorting. But what I ended up doing first is um, I went ahead and sorted my photos for January 2003. I hope you can see that. Let me, I've got to get a little feedback over here. <laughs> okay. Let me move this here so I can see what I'm showing you. Yeah. Okay. So I have my photo folder and sorry for the lighting. That's just the way it's going to be my photo folder for January, 2003. And so, um, <laughs> this is kind of all kinds of crazy, isn't it? You can see my computer where I'm watching you and watching what I'm doing. Okay. So you grab your photos. I have already gone through and sorted some of these and you can do that in this process or you can do it above that you know uh during the process before what did i just say you can do it during the process or you can do it before you actually do your layout so i wanted to share another um kind of brainstorm i had in this process and i found these little bins and um i had no idea what i was going to use them for and then today, well, it finally dawned on me what I'm going to use these little bins for. In a, in a power, like you could use an empty card box or you could use whatever you've got um, sitting around. But um, I decided I wanted a quick way that I could toss in photos that I want to give away, that I want to use in my library of memories, and then the ones that I don't need anymore for whatever reason. And instead of, you know, I just wanted them up here handy in the process right here next to my layout. And um, if you were watching Tidy Up Tuesday, I talked about these stickers, you know, using these in the sorting process. So if you wanted a little bit more about um, how to sort. We kind of talked about that. We went back into, again, this is why I brought up pop. We went back into the whole pop series and how to do ABC and how to determine which, al which photos are album worthy and what kind of scrapbooking you want to do. So if you want more information, 
you can watch Tidy Up Tuesday from just this past Tuesday. And we went into a lot more detail. And then we also got into scanning, okay, which was really exciting. Um, and so let's, uh, you, it, power layouts, it, the, the quick and dirty way I could stand up, stand and say, so all you do is you take your photos and you throw them down on your page like this. Okay, so I've got these kind of going here and I'm gonna do maybe a first pass at these guys. These are all doggy pictures and then these are leaf pictures. Okay, so I'm kind of going down. This is Audrey and the leaves and Ellen and Adam and the leaves. I'm gonna get some more boards down here. And again, I'm gonna show you two variations on how to do this also. That, um, that make a big difference as well. Okay, I'm gonna get these down here too. So then I've got some pictures of Adam over here and Audrey. So the first thing you're doing is you're just kind of going through and trying to kind of group like photos together. Okay, like that. And so those are, those may be my layouts. And actually what I'm gonna do here is, um, I'm going to make these first two pages. This album, maybe instead of putting photos on my first page, I'm actually going to, um, let me see if I can show you a little different view here. I'm going to, <laughs> there, uh, um, put, a two page spread here that I don't know if that helped or got it worse. A two page spread there. Okay. Here instead of a single page. So I think on this album, I'm actually going to do a title page, which I'm not sure what I'm going to put what photos there. So I'm actually going to turn this first two pages into a double page spread. That's all I was trying to say. And so what did I do with my, <clears throat> here, these were the first pages. So these are actually going to go here and so forth. So what you do, you, you go through the first pass and you kind of go, okay, these are photos. Now I probably should have put some of my duplicates in here like this, right? Say these are duplicates. And so in my stack, I would go, oh, these are, these are duplicate photos. So um, I, I don't need, you know, 15 of the same photos. So those are going to go in my little toss box. But, you know, I like all of these. And you can spread them out so you could see um, which ones you like. And, you know, and, and so if it's blurry or if it's not a great photo, you know, just put it in your toss box. Like this one's really blue. <laughs> I have better ones that are not blue. And I did, I actually did use these um, pictures in uh, Friday Night Scrapbooking a while ago. And I realized after I did that episode that, um, I should have really first thought about my album. And so I'm gonna kind of take you through my thought process with that as well. So as I have these laid out, right, what now this, you know, this is kind of your first pass, just quick and dirty, look at these and go, all right, so out of all these photos, what, what can I group together? What makes sense to me? So. Like I said, okay, these are dog pictures. These are dog pictures. These are leaves. These are pictures in the leaves, fall leaves. And just because I put them here doesn't mean that they're gonna end up on the page either. So don't, don't feel like if you put it on this, that means it's actually gonna end up in the album. 
but we're going to talk about that a little bit more too. So we have Fall Leaves and Audrey, and yep, I have more Audrey. So I have those. Those look like this would be a nice two-page spread over here. This one, those. Let's come over here. This looks like Adam, and then I have Audrey, and then I have a lot more of Audrey. So now I'm thinking in this process, like, how do I want this to flow? Oh gosh, I've got a lot of photos of Adam here. So actually I'm gonna take these photos of Audrey and move them down because I have photos of Audrey here and this is kind of hard to tell, I know on the white, but this is a, a two page spread right here. So now I can move Audrey with Audrey, more Audrey photos. And then I've got enough photos here of Adam. I can do that two page spread of Adam. And then I'm gonna do my next two pages. And I've got more pictures of the kids together, Ellen and Audrey, Adam and Audrey, Audrey and I, <laughs> she was two, okay? I took a lot of pictures of her. And then um, Audrey and the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little manicure party with her auntie and grandma, Ellen's auntie and grandma with Ellen. Okay, so we've got now, we kind of made that decision. Instead of having an Adam and Audrey, now I've moved this to an Adam, Adam two page spread. I've moved this to an Audrey, Audrey two page spread. I've got, you know, with our little baby Misha up here. I've got fall leaves. Now, originally, what, once you've done this, okay, the original method of uh, power layouts was then to grab your, your um, paper, stickers, memorabilia, different things, and then Go ahead and decide what what collection you want to use on what layout. So just to demonstrate this, I I grabbed the because this was kind of an easy one, right? I'm going to bring this over here so you could see it. Um, I have the the leaf pages right here. Can you see that? Okay. I'm going to see if I can get a little better view. The leaf pages right here. Okay. And then what I would do is go, oh, I love the leaves. And Audrey's got a little bit of mint green. So maybe I want to, this might be a fun time to pull out these border strips. And I would actually lay those in there. And then maybe I want to use this paper. There's some minty green. And maybe I want to do some fall leaves. Maybe some dark green leaves. So maybe these three colors to me look like they would go well with my photos. So do you see how then this process gives you kind of that overview of your photos, right? So that you can see what collection might go really well with that. Does that make sense? I'm trying to hold it up so you can see it better there. Okay, so you can then, the idea is, this is what, how, if you were to prepare for um, going to a crop or, you know, scrapbooking away from home. This is definitely how you can get yourself very prepared <laughs> and go through and pick out. And you don't have to have everything. You can always come back and add a little cluster, add a little embellishment and do your little business. But if you get like your basic papers and thoughts about um, the layout then you can have that ready, okay? So I hope, does that make sense? So then 
you'd have this ready to go and you'd stack that on top and then you'd have your, not just your photos and everything ready, but you'd also have your embellishments, paper, and all of those decisions made. So what's happening, as I mentioned before, you're doing some of this decision-making process way ahead of time so that while you're actually in the scrapbooking process, <laughs> I'm trying to get this a little better here for you, while you're in the scrapbooking process, you don't have to think about, okay, which photos should I put next to which photos? You've already made that decision. You just take that, you take your basic um, ideas on what you want to um, use as your paper and then you're ready to go. So modification number one. So this was the original layout, power layout. You take it and then you'd stack it. Whoops. And you'd um, hold it like a hot pizza, right? And you'd go like that. So modification number one is if you're using refill pages, what happens is sometimes in this process, you put this all in the box and as I mentioned, you can have one tab on the left and one tab on the right. And so you kind of know what um, page is what. But speaking from experience, when it's all in the box, sometimes I lose track. Okay. So um, what another modification method then is to... And this is how I taught it in album in a day is to switch it up a little bit and use a board and a refill page. So the board is going to be the back of the refill page and the refill page is going to be the front. Um, how am I going to wait? How? Hold on. How many? <laughs> One second. Let me see if I'm saying this right. Yeah. Actually, okay. So I have a little in the in the <laughs> I have a little diagram. So it's um, the power layout board is the white box, and the refill page is the gray box. Okay. So I kind of up updated this process. So this is update process number one. The reason this helps is, so it's, so then you would have the first title page, the front, and then the refill page, and then the front. Let me see if I can get this back right. Okay, these are going to go here. And then I'm going to take this and then I'm going to do the refill page here. Let's see. And these are going to go here. And so I'm not going to do all of this, but <clears throat> you can kind of get the idea. So then what happens when you stack your pages um, is you start, you start with a refill page, right? This is your first page. This is your title page. So that loan page is going to be on the front of here. And then on the back of this, when you, so you're going to, you're going to put your photos on the front of your first refill page. And then this is going to go on the back of that page. Then you have your next refill page ready to go. Did you guys see how that worked? So then you have that, those two ready to go. Then say you've scrapbooked these on the page, so they're stuck down. You flip that page over and you take 
the power layout board with your next photos. And those go on the back of that refill page. Okay, so what you're doing is kind of keeping track of what's a page, you know, what's the front of the page and what's the back of the page by using refills. Okay, so that helps you kind of get, um, well, it for one, it helps you stretch your layout boards because you only need half as many. And then you already have your refill pages and you're just working directly in your album. So what this doesn't help with is if you are a 12 by 12 pocket page, unless you use the inserts of the pocket page instead of an actual refill page, you could do that, right? Um, and then, uh, um, you, so you could use it for the pocket page idea as well. Okay. Um, I hope, does that make sense? Let me see if I look at um, my little, um, yeah. Okay. Also, I'm looking at some of my notes. What I mentioned in here is if you feel like you want, like if you're preparing for a crop or something away from home, feel like you can also add in a peekaboo pocket. Like if you look at a page and go, wow, I have a lot of photos for that page, put a peekaboo pocket, throw that down here with your photos and it's ready to go too. Okay. Or along with your, um, your paper memorabilia and so on. Okay. So I'm going to, so I know, um, I think there were a lot of things going on. Um, okay, so, oh, Carrie's here. Carrie, yep. And, oh, good idea. She also um, slips in a pencil sketch and notes for her ideas in each layout slot. Oh, are we talking about slots yet? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you update number three now. <laughs> Now that I've given you this idea, but I want you to kind of have a different, different perspective. So the idea that um, using, I, I love using the pages and this is how I did it in my album in a day class. And this is how I got my album done for sure. Um, Cause they were all ready to go. And I knew exactly what page went next. So here is option number three which is kind of a new concept, but I've been working with it. And remember, we've been talking about vertical organization and horizontal organization. So one of the major drawbacks for me in Power Layout is that it's a horizontal organization. And I really understand myself that I am a vertical organization girl. Okay. So what does that mean, Warren? What does that mean? So I'm going to tell you, um, it means, I'm going to bring this over. I really like to see things in a vertical format. So I'm going to bring this up so you can see. Okay. I think that's probably good lighting right there. I shared this um, on a tidy up a few weeks ago. This is the little mini pod insert. I know they're not available until June. I do have a few in the shop still. But what I realized for a lot of different reasons, I really like to be able to see my um, projects organized vertically like this instead of horizontally. Do you guys already see the difference? between my my power layouts, my groupings of things together vertically instead of horizontally. Now, there's no way, I mean, you have to lay things out horizontally first, but how I then access them, I like to see it vertically. Okay. And I realize I'm probably going to have a lot of questions after I show this, and then so we can come back and 
I'll, I'll go through the chat and see if I can answer questions. I want, I stuck this in here because I want to tell you, so the next product I'm going to talk about, there's actually two things you can use. You can use the power simple sleeves with the power layout board or, um, what I have done is I got um, a box of a hundred of um, these uh, Samsil scrapbook page protectors. And I think they come out like, I don't know, 10 cents a piece or something like that. It's not very expensive for a hundred of them, maybe 20 cents. And this is what I use. It's not where I keep my photos, it is an organizational tool for me. Um, I always rely on the CM products. I think, you know, that's where I want to have my photos land and be safe forever. But this is a fantastic organizational tool. And you've seen me talk about, I, I use the um, four by fours, not this, but you know, the pockets like that for my memorabilia and embellishments and things like that. And then I slide those into the power project folders, but this is what, um, you can use for this next way of scrap of power layouts, which is kind of what I've gone to because the end result is a vertical system. Okay. So I've got an, a box set up. So this is 2003, which is what I'm working on right now. And what I've done is <clears throat> I've taken those sleeves. Okay. So the hole punches are here on the left-hand side and I slipped in a uh, layout board. So now what I have is a pocket with a front side and a back side. And this is also kind of how, you know, it helps me think album wise as well. So to do this kind of a power layout, what I have you do, the difference is going to be, you're going to put your pocket down first. And then next to the pocket, you're going to put a layout board without a pocket. And then you're going to put down a pocket. And I keep, I always keep the holes on the right hand side, on the left hand side, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. And then next to that, I'm gonna put a layout board. So what happens now in this process? Let's take a, a different look at how this works together. So I'm gonna grab those photos if I can find them now. Did I put them in the box? Where did I put those photos? my photos. Okay. Well, actually here's, here's the great thing <laughs> with this process. This is one of the reasons I really like it is that not only is it vertical, but it is so easy to rearrange. So, Oh, my pictures are right here. Is this it? Yeah. These are my January photos. Okay. So here's my January photos. And then I think these were my, these were my other January photos. Okay. So can you guys see that? Okay. I'm trying to arr, get this arm down in the right spot. Okay. So I have my pocket. Do you see the whole, the pocket with the holes? And then I have my next board. And then I think my next photos, I, I think were the dog photos, right? So I have those and then my board. Okay. I'm going to get a better view again. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So what happens now? You take these photos and you could do the same thing if you want to add memorabilia. Oh, and one of the original power layout, they also say, grab your trimmer. That's why I had the trimmer here. 
And if you want to go ahead and crop your photos and get them ready for the page, you can do that too. I mean, the original power layout method, it was pretty much your page was ready to go in your album. I find that I really kind of like to leave that. I, I like the organization of power layout so that I can get an idea of my whole album, but I like to leave the creative process until I'm ready to scrapbook for the most part. So I always say that's optional. So let's just talk about the organizational part. So I have these photos and what I'm gonna do is slip them in the front, okay? Now, why I need the pocket is mostly when you're adding memorabilia or you're adding larger photos or things like that, you wanna also be able to slip those things in much like I did for Adam. So this is really handy <clears throat> when you're doing kids um, things, right? So this one, I've just started pulling things together. So it's his class photo. It's one of his first photos from, uh, this was first grade. And some of the things I wanna add in there. So you can see why you know, when you have memorabilia and larger things, these pockets work really well. So this was, um, this was the first pass. I haven't, you know, this is that, what I just showed you is not as refined as this process. So slip those in the front. Then what you're gonna do is take the next board and you're gonna slide these in the back, okay? So now we have an extra board. We're gonna just reuse that for the next part of the process. My next layout is my doggy photos. Those are gonna go in the front. And then I'm gonna take the next two and those are gonna go in the back. Okay. And then, um, let's see. I, I, I wanna do a few more so you can get the idea of what this feels like. Okay. I'm gonna tuck those. I don't know if you saw that. I'm going to put those in my pod. So these are, we're back to the Adam photos. I know this is, hold on. These are two pages. Oh, I think I messed up because these are going to be front and back and I, I don't want them front and back. <laughs> so easily enough. So this is actually front and this is going to be my facing page. So what's nice about using these sleeves is that the holes are kind of a reminder where that jeeping is and what pages are going to be facing each other. So I just caught that, right? I want these two pages. Remember how I said I wanted to do a title page? So I actually tucked those in the wrong pocket. So this is going to be my title page. Then these are going to be two facing pages together. Okay, now I think I got to redo this because I've got um, dog and dog. <laughs> so now what I want is I've got these two pages, dog and dog. Okay. Now I have the back of this and I want to do Adam and Adam. So I'm going to grab another pocket. Okay. And when it's laid out, you, you guys can under, you'll get the idea of how, how quickly this can go. And then Adam over here. Okay. So those are my next two facing pages. So what is happening is I'm kind of building an album that I can actually flip through that's not going to kind of float around if I take one page out and then go, oh my gosh, where was that page? And it also gives me a way to visually look at my albums in a vertical format. <laughs> which we've talked about. So then I can bring in my little mini pod. So this is another favorite 
reason I love these little mini pods. And I've got 2003 just ready to go. Now, what I would end up doing, this is another tweak I haven't, um, you know, I was thinking about today preparing for you guys. I love these little tape things. You can find them on Amazon. I haven't linked them up yet, but I'll, I'll link it. They're super cheap. I mean, so cheap, but they're little tape flags. Okay. And what I was thinking is once I have um, my, my layout done, like, so, you know, spread out along the table, <clears throat> what I would do is actually, um, label the order of my pages. So what I would do is write on this one title page right? So I won't get confused again. And it's, it's just easy enough to peel right off, but you can write on it and it, it just super easy. And then I would make this page one, right? And then take another one. And then this is page two. Because I've already decided these are going to, you know, this is the order. I think I may have missed. Some, I don't know. Anyhow, I can always go back. Um, it takes some brain power to kind of go through this and, and figure it out. Okay, so then there's three. So now I've also really just figured out one. This is my first, sec second page, third page. And then if I say, oh, I really want to scrap these pictures because they're so cute and they're at them and I have the Serenity collection, um, I can grab that and I know what order, like I know which, which page I took out of order because they're all numbered, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So this is modification number three. As I mentioned, it doesn't look like much because all the photos are just kind of floating here at the bottom, but just think of um, like if you wanted to add in, <clears throat> let me just try to find something, a piece of memorabilia, right? And you go, oh, this is, this is Ellen. And this is Ellen, and now, how simple, I can just slide in that piece of memorabilia that goes with those photos, and it holds everything together, okay? So, the main thing to do this type of a power layout, again, you need those boards. You need those boards. Now, as soon as you scrap this, of course, you can reuse it over and over and over again. Like you'll never need to, you know, do it again. But the original setup, you may need a few sets of the power layout boards, these guys, to get yourself set up. And then, like I said, I just got a box of 100 of the sleeves. Now, if you want to get super duper fancy, and I think we did talk about this in one of my pop, uh, member of my pop lives, and um, I couldn't remember the name of this. I think Diane had to help me. Book rings. I think these are called book rings. So this is another idea. If you really want to get the feel of what it, of what your album is going to feel like to flip through. You can just add a book ring and just go, oh, yeah, look at that. I love ha seeing that. Or you can buy an inexpensive 12 by 12 notebook that fits these page protectors and keep them in there on a shelf. Um, but I do I do really like the pod because I love flipping. I just, I just love flipping through things like this. Okay, so a couple other options for this type of scrapbooking. Okay, and um, again, if you, as you saw how easy it was 
if I got things out of order, you just grab it, move it, put it where it needs to be, and then you're ready to go again. So for me, um, the, this type of power layouts was really important <clears throat> to kind of get my head around and gave me a, a different view of my books. So as we're wrapping up, kind of one of the most important things I want to leave you with today, and then I'm going to come back to questions, I promise, is in this process, to me, one of the most important things you can do, and I'm going to, so I'm going to cycle back around to the pop process. So I've taken, I've taken these photos and basically what I've said is that all of these photos are album worthy. But the other thing I've just learned is how many pages, physical pages, this is going to take to scrapbook, right? Because this is one page, this is another page. Let me get this back over here. This is another page and this is another page. And as I was, you know, kind of preparing and getting ready for this, I thought that one of the main nuggets I want to give you tonight is also to remember you do not have to scrapbook every photo. And sometimes when we do power layouts, we get caught up in that I have to scrap, I have to put every photo down on a board, right? I get the big stack of photos and I got to scrap them all. I got to scrapbook all these photos. So remember your ABC method and remember that you can toss. You can also, I'm going to come right back to this, plan for library memories. And you can also plan for giving some away. You know, if there's photos that are just not great, but they're going to be meaningful to someone else, give them away. So in this process, my aha moment for myself was I'm looking at all these pages and I'm going, do I want all of these photos in my 2003 family album or is there a better place for telling the story? And is there a better place? Like, is there a, um, is there a pets album that this would be a better place to put? And I'm, I'm to the point now, and I've gotten asked this a lot. And I think this process is going to help tremendously is do you scrapbook twice? Well, here's the thing, like my family albums, I've moved into the big moments, you know, where I just kind of want to celebrate the biggest moments. But here's a year, 2003, when my kids were little and I took so many photos of them. So if I stuck to true big moments, it would be Valentine's Day, Adam's birthday, you know, New Year's Day, um, you know, the big uh, Easter and those celebrations. But look at all these photos I just laid out for you of the kids with the dogs and Ellen losing her first tooth and the kids playing in the leaves. So as I was going through this process, I, I kept reminding myself, and so this is what I'd like you to you know think about. I kept reminding myself in this process, are these all photos, especially if you're laying out a family album. If you're laying out a trip album, it may not be as hard, you know, because it's a, it's a start and a finish, but, um, or a heritage or something like that. But I think, especially with our kids, we tend to take so many photos, right? So if I'm laying out this, um, these pages, would I, could I, would I, or could I look at some of these and go like these, this is a, a perfect example. 
these are the photos of Ellen, you know, and her auntie and her grandma getting a manicure. I only have three photos. Do I want to devote a whole half side of a page in my album to these three photos? Or can this tell a different story as a things we do, you know, or people we love? What do we do with the people we love? With my, with my auntie and with my grandma, what do I do with them? To me, this is a better story for my library of memories than my family book. So I, I just want you to kind of think about that. So maybe I move these into library of memories and the little pictures of Ellen and Adam with our sweet little Misha. These might go into pets we love because um, we don't have this little girl anymore. She's been gone for a while, but wouldn't that be sweet to have all the photos of Misha together with the kids? And is that more meaningful than putting it in my family album? Just as another page in another day. So I hope that makes sense. Um, for me, this was kind of a lot of head work I had to think through. But it, it makes sense to me to take a look once you have it laid out. Once you go, okay, now I've sorted, I've purged, and... These are the pages, these are the photos I wanna do. Now then ask yourself one more time, <laughs> one more time, are these, is, are these photos, basically what you're asking, are these photos going into the correct album for the way you scrapbook? So if you are more of a chronological scrapper and that's all you do, then the answer is yes. You know, you just put them all in chronological order. But if you're moving away from that like I am and you're doing more theme-based and memory-based scrapbooking, then it makes more sense for me to put it in a place where I can tell a richer, deeper story. And that, again, goes back to my pop process, which is why I brought that up again before. So if you want to learn more about why I'm switching, why I switched, you know, you can watch the how I would start over. <laughs> I would definitely do things differently. And, um, and so I don't want to get caught up in the cycle of putting every photo because I have all these photos and think that I have to scrapbook them all. So is there a better place to put those pictures? That's the question you need to ask. Even after going through the process, it's not too late because you're looking at your album as a whole. So this is the time to do it. This is the time to make the decision. And, um, and then maybe then, you know, I say, okay, so the dog pictures, that's a whole page I just took out of my album. And that's going to go into library memories. But I do want to keep the leaf pictures. So, you know, because that was definitely kind of a family thing. So I'm going to keep those. And maybe I do want to keep... Um, Ellen losing her first tooth and, you know, just there's some stories to tell, but this could also be told in her album. So there's a lot of um, thought process. This is where your pop planner will help. And the other thing I was finding in this process is going through and saying, making sure that my kids had albums that are representative and that the photos uh, go into an album, you know, that they'll keep as well. So there's a lot of, you know, multi-levels going on here in the process. But the power layout itself, you can see, is pretty easy and smooth. So there's three different options for you of the original power layout method using the box, the modified power layout method using boards and refill pages, and then the modified modified <laughs> method, which uses boards and sleeves, which gives you kind of a flippable, um, more secure holding of your layouts. Okay, so um, I want to come back to my overhead camera. So let me get that set up and check out um, 
if there's some questions. <laughs> did I did I give you <laughs> did I did I give you some questions to think about <laughs> that process? Okay, so let me grab this. And I'm going to come back to my overhead. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so this was the power layout method number two, once again, which is using the refill pages. I just wanted to kind of go through that. And then um, just so you can see that a little better up close. So this is the... Um, layout board inside the um, scrapbook page. Okay, and then layout board, scrapbook page, layout board. Now, I just should mention the original, I have a lot of these original ones used to have marked off for eight and a half by 11 and seven by seven. And then I think they did eight by eight and I don't know, different sizes. The new boards, they don't have any of these markings. So if you're wondering like, why does Lauren have markings on hers? It's just because they're old. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. All right, um, let's check for questions. And I've got to get my beverage here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So something is going to take three albums. Woo! That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I think, Nancy, you're saying, you know, studying your photos and then actually taking time in the process. That decision where it's going to go, right? I'm thinking that's what you are about. Um, we're ready to say. So, woo, let me look for questions. Okay, um, Okay. so I think we answered some of those. Um, how much is the monthly and yearly? So that I think relates to my POP membership. The monthly membership is $10 a month. You can get a year at a time for $100 a year. And that's for four hours. And then you get all the handouts and uh, downloads and a four-hour crop every month. Okay, um, The bags, the border stickers come in. I want just the bags. Um, and really rough. I know. Oh, Cindy, I think you sent me a message about that. Um, I don't think that they make those old uh, long bags anymore. They're just they're just gone. Um, so they've all they've gone to all the Ziploc bags now, and that's that's just kind of I think that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, Lori has a question. Where do you get those little bins from? Oh, okay. Um, Lori, I was trying to remember where I've got those because I've had them a while. I, I'm going to have to look for them. I don't remember if I got them on Amazon or, um, they could have been a Joanne find. They could have been Joanne, but, uh, let me, let me show it to you. Let's take a look at the measurements. So at least you'll have measurements. Um, so you can figure figure that out. Oh, this is a zero centering ruler. That's not gonna help. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, so these bins, I just thought they were really cute. So this is a six inch at the top. These are, yeah, it looks like a little six by six inch bin, but the four by four, you know, four by sixes fit perfectly, you know, just tucked in there. And, uh, you know, I just stuck my post-it right there in the front. So yeah, about a six by six bin. You could probably find something like it on Amazon. I don't think it has any, it doesn't have any branding on it. So um, I, I knew I was gonna get that question. <laughs> Okay. Um, what's the quickest? Okay. A lot of back order printed photos. What's the quickest way to organize by person? Okay. Um, so 
I'm a big fan of artificial intelligence. <laughs> Seriously, which is, again, why, um, Carrie, I probably have you laughing, right? Um, which is why I um, love my scanner and why I've chosen that that's kind of one of the things that, um, let me just get in, into my app really quick. One of the things I tried doing is, uh, or I've started doing, and again, going back to Tidy Up Tuesday, is scanning. Because uh, artificial, I mean, your photos program can <laughs> do it like that. For printed photos, you know, so I would say for, for digital photos, you know, just rely on your artificial intelligence for, here's that scanner I was talking about, um, you know, then you can just teach your, your program, what, who is what, which person is what, and then, and then, you know, all you do is click on that person and you've got all their photos, which is amazing. For printed photos, you know, I love, <clears throat> I love the post-its. So, we, you know, we kind of went over this in Tidy Up Tuesday. Use your Post-its and, you know, set them out and make, make each person a different color, right? And so then just start piles if you're sorting people like that. You can do this by year. You can do this by month. You can do this by decade. You know, I just, I think you've got to figure out a way that, you know, as you're going through uh, what works for you with, you know, your method. And, um, I do really recommend <clears throat> having some kind of, if it's bins, it's bins, or if not, you're going to put down on your board. This is what we did before giveaway, you know, what's your giveaway bin. And then I want to see some good, good, stack in your toss because not every photo is album worthy. They're not, you know, get rid of them. So if you, you know, have bins or you can have your post-its for that as well. Um, so another question. Okay. Where is the power layout method document located? So the one that I was sharing with you, um, that, like I mentioned, that I did in my album in a day class, this one, uh, it's in my album in a day, but I was just kind of sharing that here live with you. And, um, I don't, I don't have a printable of that other than in this class. Um, and the crop talk, I don't know, um, I don't know if I can make that publicly available. I know I could probably post that in my customer group, like the original crop talk from the power layout, but I don't know if I could make that, you know, a public download because it does have a copyright on it. Um, so I, I, I share these things uh, with my groups, but I, I don't offer them as a download just because of the copyright. The, crop talks. So you could always try to find someone who has a copy of the original and maybe you can get a copy that way. Um, so if it's helpful, I can always add this to my pop member area because um, that's not a public platform. Um, and that's where I did the journaling hand. I did put the journaling handout in there from the crop talk. Okay. So, um, oh, do I burn or shred my photos? Um, I, I don't, <laughs> that's a good question. Our trash, I don't know. I feel like our trash is so trashy that I don't think anybody would want to get into these photos <laughs> once I get rid of them. But, um, I, we, we can't burn here. I'm in a high fire zone. So if you, I think of probably a safer zone, a safer bet would be shredding. If that makes you feel better, definitely shred. Um, but typically I just, I just toss them. 
maybe that's not the best idea. But <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Good question though, right? I, I think if you have one of those powerful shredders, man, you could just grab a stack and go, zzz, you know, stick them right through there. Okay. Good questions. Anything else? I don't know if anybody missed putting a cue in there, um, but, you know, ask it now at the bottom of the chat and I can try to help you. Um, Cause I know there's a, a lot going on here. So if I miss something and you're still on, please let me know. Um, <laughs> Tracy says her, her girls complain she has more cat pages in her albums than pic pictures of them, right? <laughs> so um, the sleeves with the three holes, those are linked on my Amazon page. So if you go to, um, let me screen share. If you go to my website, Remember, I've got my shop tab up here, and then on the drop down, it's shop my favorite things on Amazon. <clears throat> and you can hit the pink button and go directly to my Amazon shop, or you can just scroll. So Samsung is the same company that I like their mama bear sleeves. You've heard me talk about the mama bear. I also like the... Um, nine pocket for organizing my memorabilia and embellishments. And then I'm pretty sure somewhere way down here somewhere, <laughs> I have those 12 by 12. There's a lot of stuff I use in my scrapping journey. So um, <clears throat> I think maybe if it's not here, maybe here. Nope. Mm-mm. So it might be this, the bigger list, the one with the bigger pictures down here is a little less updated. The most updated list is the one with the pink button. And so um, it's under craft room organization. And I'm pretty sure it is still here. Let's see. Sam Sill, where are you? The 12 by 12. Right here, a hundred for twenty six ninety nine. So twenty six cents, twenty seven cents, twenty eight cents with tax, <laughs> twenty nine cents with tax. But hey, a hundred of them, you know, that's going to last you a while for a lot of power layouts. So um, right here, scrapbook refill pages. And as I mentioned, that company does have a lot of other products that I like to use for organizing as well. Okay, hopefully that helps. Um, I'm always adding to my list um, to help you out, you know, help you find things. So let me know if you need to find more. Okay. So um, let me just put up another uh, screen right here as a reminder uh, that we are on Tuesday. So as I mentioned last Tuesday, we did scanning and organizing photos part one, where I actually opened my box, plugged everything in, downloaded the driver and got things set up. This Tuesday is your chance to come back and go, okay, let's see if we can figure this part out. And what can, what do we need to do for this? So it's going to be part two, where we're just going to kind of hit on questions that you may have come across. And let me tell you, even in part one, I hit some, <laughs> some things I didn't know how to do. So um, there's always a challenge. Okay. And um, I think there was something else I wanted to share with you. Ah, the pop crop. The pop crop. Our next pop crop is going to be March 11th at um, 12 noon Pacific to 4 Pacific. So you need to adjust that for your time zone and, um, and then get uh, whatever um, uh, event adjustment you have. So Pacific here on the West Coast, you know, I know it's actually the next day for my Aussie fun friends. And so um, uh, 12 noon to four Pacific. And then I think that is all. Um, let me come back. Hello. Woo. I'm just 
way up there. <laughs> okay. Ah, my cheeks are red and that was a lot. Um, but hopefully, hopefully the layout wasn't too hard to follow and um, <laughs> it was helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, um, either on Facebook or on um, YouTube. Actually, the YouTube comments, once this posts on YouTube, I can find those a lot easier than Facebook. Um, just saying. So those are easier for me to reply to if you have a specific question. Just find me on YouTube and then leave a comment. And hopefully we can get through if I missed any. And um, okay. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. I need to get in touch with you too, my friend. <laughs> it's been a rough uh, few days, but back in, back in action. So um, any other questions, let me know. Hopefully that gave you some ideas to think about some ways of uh, looking at your album projects as a whole, how to get that whole thing organized, because sometimes that's the whole trick. How do you get my bigger picture organized so that I can make these decisions? And then always remember that very last question to ask is, is this the right album to put that picture in? And it may just surprise you if you answer that differently now than maybe you would have in the past. I know it surprises me when I do. So, okay. So Karen says she loves the third layout method. Can't wait to try it. <laughs> All right. Let me know if you do try it too and you have success or if you've tweaked it and you find something that works for you. Let me know. I'd love to hear. Okay. So until I see you again two weeks from now, uh, for Friday night scrapbooking. I'll have some new product to play with by then. So we're going to have to make some stuff. We'll probably have to do some borders and some pages. So stay tuned. We'll get back into scrapping because I'm going to be finishing my power layout for 2003. Just watch. I should do that in two weeks. I'll give you an update and you can see my whole album ready to go. That'll be inspiring, right? That'll be, that'll be my own, um, deadline for you guys. How about that? <laughs> and you can do it along with me. And until then, remember the pop Facebook group is always open for you. And we will see you in the pop member area a week from tomorrow. And we're going to have a great time over there too. Okay. So until next time, my friends, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I hope you take time to craft some joy. See you next time. Bye for now.